Hello, I'm Helen Bradley. Welcome to this video tutorial. In this tutorial, I'll show you how to assemble and process an HDR image sequence here in Lightroom 6 and Lightroom CC. Before we start with this video tutorial, let's look and see what it is that we're going to achieve. This is the image that we're going to end up with and we're going to make it out of a HDR sequence. So this is the first, second and third image that I shot in a sequence. I've put it together as an HDR image in Lightroom and then I've processed it. And we're going to step through all the steps involved in getting from three separate images to a final processed HDR image. We're here in the library module in Lightroom and this is the HDR sequence that we're going to process. This is the first image. This is the first image. It was shot at zero exposure compensation. The second one was at minus one and a half stops and this one is at positive one and a half stops. So I have marked my HDR sequences by just alternating colors throughout this particular folder, which was a folder of images that were all shot as HDR sequences, well at least most of them. So I'm going to select the first in the series and I'm going to shift click on the third image. So these are our three HDR sequence images. I'll right click and choose Photo Merge HDR. This is a feature that is new to Lightroom 6 and Lightroom CC. It's not available in earlier versions. I'll click that. Now Lightroom's going to go ahead and assemble all those three images together. We get some choices and I suggest that you always use Auto Align. Even though these images were shot on a tripod, it's just prudent to make sure that they're aligned properly. Auto Tone you can take or leave. It's just a starting point for the image. With deghosting, you want to choose an amount for deghosting. Now I've processed this image a couple of times and the first time I thought that there wasn't any ghosting because I thought it was a fairly still morning and there was nothing here that moved. When I looked at the sharpening, I really saw that the trees were moving a little bit and it seemed like there were some ghosts there. So that was movement from one image to the other in the sequence. So I've just taken deghosting up to high to try and get rid of those and just stabilize the trees in the image so I'm not seeing duplicates of, say, branches. You'll want to choose a setting that works for you and I suggest that you try each of them. I've actually had some results where using high actually gave me some really huge artifacts over the image where they just weren't present in medium. So your mileage might vary on these, but if you find that you're getting some really weird things happening with high, then go back perhaps and try medium. The artifact over here is actually a lens flare. It's not being caused by the deghosting effect at all. So once we've made our settings here, once we're happy with what we're seeing in the image, we'll just click to merge it. And Lightroom will go ahead and create the HDR image for us. Now what it's going to do is it's going to name it the same name as the first image in the sequence. It's going to tack HDR on the end. And then if we've already processed it previously, it's going to give it a sequential number. Well, I deleted my one without a number. So this one's come out without any number, but this one has HDR-2 attached to it and any future one would be dash 3-4 dash if I reprocess this sequence. So now that we've got our HDR image, let's go across to the develop module. And here we're just going to do the regular things that we would do in developing an image. The first thing I'm going to do is to try and kill the color cast in this image. Now I know because I shot this that these patches here were probably pretty near to being grey paint. So if I select on them I'm going to get a fairly good white balance adjustment for the image. If I click here I'm going to get it to pink I think. So I think it's sort of somewhere between 6150 and 5500 in terms of colour temperature. So we could perhaps warm it up a little bit but we don't want to go quite as far as that second click with the white balance setting actually got us. So let's say that that's a pretty good starting point for the image. Let's look at how we're going to process it. Well Lightroom's auto tone effect has actually brought the highlights way down in this image. I'm going to leave them there but I'm also going to bring my whites down. What I want to do is to try and get back some detail in these clouds. It's opened up the shadows and I'm also going to open up the blacks and we'll add a bit of clarity at this stage, a little bit of vibrance and we can also have a look at adding a bit of contrast. Is that sort of 
lightening and brightening the image. Now I'm going to head towards the graduated filter. The first graduated filter I'm going to bring in is going to affect the sky. So I'm just going to drag down here and make it a fairly large spacing on the graduated filter. This is the filter being applied 100% up to this line, then 50% and then petering out to nothing at this line. Now I want to reset the filter so I'm going to double click on the word effect. I'm just going to get my filter in place. And when I'm happy with that, I can start looking at the adjustments. I'm going to try bringing the exposure down in the sky just to try and get that more detail in it and bring highlights down too. I can bring clarity up a bit. And I could even work on saturation. Now, if I'm not happy with this blue coloring, we can kill that blue coloring by adding in some yellow. So I'm just going to click here on the yellow. You can see that we are able to affect the blue a little bit by adding the opposite color into the sky. And since it's just on sunrise, it can wear quite a bit of color in the sky, I'm not thinking that that's particularly bad that we're getting some sort of yellowy orange through it. So let's just do that. I'll click Done. I'm going to run at least one more graduated filter across the image here just to bring in the contrast. So I'm going to start over here and just drag. And again, I've got those legacy settings. Double click on Effect. Now what we're seeing here, this sort of circle of pink is part of this lens flare. It's here and it's over here. So again, not worried about the difference in color there. It's just part of what I shot. But let's drop the exposure down a bit. Let's add some contrast. And let's add a bit of clarity. And click Done. Now I could add another graduated filter, but let's try a different effect. And let's start by going to the Effects panel and adding a Highlight Priority Darkening Vignette. So I'm just going to vignette the very edges of the image just to darken them and bring your eye into the image. Now let's go back and see about this foreground because I think it's a little bit light and my eye is tending to go there. So I'm going to grab the graduated filter, just drag up from the bottom here. If I hold shift as I do this, I'm going to drag it in a straight line. Again, I'm going to reset the effect. I'm just going to drop the exposure down a little bit just to darken the very foreground of this image. Now I think I can probably bring this down a little bit and increase the negative exposure. I'm happy with a little bit of light in here, but not just right at the very edge of the image. So I'm going to click Done. And to finish off, I'm going to add a radial filter. This was new in Lightroom 5. I'm just going to drag over my radial filter to create it. Move it into position. I want it around about this area of the houses in the background. I'm going to reset it, so let's just double click on Effect. And I'm going to invert it because right now it's affecting the area outside the circle. I want to affect the area inside the circle. So I'm going to invert the mask, add quite a bit of a feather here, and then just increase the exposure. So I want to get just a subtle lighting effect in here. Just going to position it in place and then click Done. It's not obvious that we've added a radial filter in here, but we have added a lightning effect to those houses. So let's see where we started. This is the original HDR processed image. So this is where Lightroom started us with the image, and this is what we've been able to create out of it. So I hope that you enjoy shooting some HDR sequences and processing them in Lightroom. Certainly the ability to process an HDR sequence in Lightroom just opens up a whole world of HDR. It just makes it so much easier to play with these effects. I'm Helen Bradley. Thank you for joining me for this video tutorial. Look out for more video tutorials here on my YouTube channel. And consider subscribing to my channel and you'll be alerted when new videos are released. And visit my website at projectwoman.com where you'll find more tips, tricks and tutorials on a range of applications including Photoshop, Lightroom, Illustrator and a whole lot more.